uh, good evening to all the participants. Uh, so welcome to the day four session on sequence analysis. That is on Needleman once and Smith Waterman algorithm. Yesterday, uh, I mean last session, we discussed something related to sequence alignment. And then we have discussed about multiple sequence alignment tool, isn't it? Uh, but uh, we didn't discuss about Paman Blossom. The Paman Blossom will be discussing in the next session. So if you see the overall schedule, uh, so we have discussed sequence alignment and the overall types of sequence alignment. Uh, and today we are discussing on Needleman, Wunz and Smith Waterman algorithm. Paman Blossom or club uh, in this uh, module that is in the next uh, session so now let me complete about how to go for uh, the multiple sequence alignment because uh, we have seen one tool we can recap uh, the tool and we can also see what are the other programs available in multiple sequence alignment then we discuss about this algorithm in detail yeah so we'll be solving the problems uh, for uh, these two different algorithms Okay, now let me take you in uh, to the, to, before going to today's session on uh, the global alignment algorithm, that is uh, Needleman once algorithm. And for uh, local alignment, we use Smith Waterman algorithm. Okay, so there are two types of alignment, local and global. So for, uh, again, I'm telling, for global alignment, we use Needleman once. And for local alignment, we use Smith Waterman algorithm. So before going to today's uh, session on this, we can recap the last session contents. So so can we discuss in detail about the last session contents, what we discussed on Friday? So what exact, uh, what are the tools we have seen in the hands-on demo? Sequence is very good. So uh, we majorly focused on uh, uh sequence uh, types of sequencing so where you have chemical and uh, enzymatic very good from well tech it seems Kirtana, uh, superb uh, for chemical method is maxim Gilbert and uh, enzymatic uh, method is sanger method of sequencing and we also seen types of uh, sequence alignment uh, in types of sequence alignment one mode of classification is local and global the second mode of classification is pairwise and multiple Either you can classify like local and global, or you can classify like pairwise and multiple sequence alignment. Okay, so about that, uh, we'll be discussing it. Uh, so before going to the uh, pairwise sequence alignment and multiple sequence alignment, um, so what are the various NGS technologies we have discussed on yesterday, I mean, last session? Types of NGS technologies is the second question. Of course, only through the sequencers, we will be uh, retrieving the sequence, isn't it? So whatever sequences we retrieve, we try to blast. Uh, I mean, we try to go for pairwise alignment. Is, uh, is audio is low for all, isn't it? Uh, how about it now? Okay. It's OK then. OK, good. Yeah. Now, uh, I think you have to increase your uh, audio, Rufana. And how about the answers? For types of NTS technologies. So what are the technologies we have discussed on? Very good. Ion Torrent, Oxford Nanopore. So these are specific uh, equipment names, isn't it? Of course, techniques. Uh, but uh, what else did we discuss? But, uh, from your general knowledge, you have answered. Very good. How about the general technologies? We have, uh, uh, you remember, I show you the PPT and expand because. Uh, I'm not, I'm not getting answers from others also. Yeah, so if you see this kind of ion torrent sequencing or uh, the Illumina, so obviously we have to use these uh, technologies like sequencing by hybridization, nanopore sequencing, sequencing by synthesis, pulsed multi-line excitation, microfluidic separation platforms. So these are some of the techniques I've showed, but other than this pyro sequencing, and uh, other kind of modified Sanger sequencing techniques are available. So whatever you use, of course, you also embed this technique called shotgun sequencing to get small reads. So whatever reads you get as a small, it will be easier for you 
to uh, sequence in the sequences okay and even if you see the sequencing whole genome sequencing uh, it's a kind of a chromosome uh, kind of a sequencing clone by clone sequencing so we have types of sequencing also how we take the sample for sequencing okay and finally whatever you sequence you just assemble it in a single sequence okay we also have concepts like bacterial artificial chromosome like how we find the chromosomes uh, in bacteria humans so we can also able to synthesize i mean we can able to use an artificial library okay we didn't discuss that in detail but uh, this is a concept uh, let me take you into the types of alignment so we discussed about pairwise alignment in pairwise we have three methods dot matrix dynamic programming word or k triple okay so in this i can ask you now uh shortcut sequencing isn't it oh you're asking me uh, asking the question like shortcut sequencing shortcut sequencing is something like with high pressure if you bombard the sequence the sequence will be uh, bro broken into multiple contexts that is small sequences whatever small sequences you have it will be easier for you uh, to go for sequencing you can't able to take the entire large dna sequence you can't take uh, 10 lakh characters or 100 lakh characters uh, sequence to go for sequencing instead you better use this technique initially so that you can uh, share the so dna into multiple pieces whatever you share okay use this for the sequencing okay okay uh i was explaining so i was asking you some question yeah so give me some uh tools for pairwise sequence alignment so especially for dot matrix method we have three methods just now i showed you dot matrix method word or k triple method and the third is the dynamic programming in uh, okay, so these are the methods. Very good. So I got answer from Pooja. The dot plot is right. Other than dot plot, what else we can use? Dotlet. Okay. So dot plot, dotlet. Okay. These are some of the programs. What are K triple methods? Okay. Now the next question is, what are the softwares we use for uh, working on uh, word or K triple methods? Word or K triple. The word is a method. Only one software I explained you, which uses hashing. Very good. So uh, Swakshar is right. Uh, FASTA. You know, uh, FASTA is fast all or fast algorithm. Okay. So this uses uh, this kind of a hashing the code, which we call it as the word of capable method. More about this we'll be seeing in the Wednesday session. Okay. Uh, good. And the uh, final is the dynamic programming. In dynamic programming, we have two types of alignment. Uh, the types of alignment is uh, uh, local alignment and global alignment. For local alignment, you can use with waterman. You can see here. Uh, so for the local alignment, okay, we can use the Smith waterman. And similarly, for the global, we can use the Needleman one cell algorithm. So this is uh, and, uh, coming under dynamic programming. This is the third method. Okay. So we also have uh, tools like. Uh, water okay in emboss package if you want to work on this we use uh we use one right? minute uh i think i have been no no water okay this is water uh for smith waterman and needle for global alignment okay yeah, so the, the uh, we can uh, try like that. And uh, if you see the multiple sequence alignment, we can go for consensus uh, methods, dynamic programming, genetic algorithm. Majorly, we go for this uh, most of the programs are modeled or uh, developed using these progressive methods. Okay, even the cluster W, cluster X, and uh, T coffee, everything works under pile up or everything works under progressive methods okay and uh, we also have iterative methods which uses machine learning algorithms like hidden morco models neural networks hidden morco models and uh, neural network uh, kind of a multiple sequence alignment uses the iterative methods okay so and we also have uh, separately for genetic algorithms and even hmm is uh, given separately okay so majorly you have progressive iterative and uh, uh, the third one I can sure tell you is the dynamic programming. 
use a combination of progressive methods in dynamic programming. So more about this we'll be seeing in the subsequent slides. Yeah, uh, do you remember what exactly did we uh, discuss in the last session? We have uh, seen local versus global alignment. I told you uh, with a problem, if you want to uh, get a maximum alignment score for a same sequence S1 and S2, if you compare uh, pairwise alignment uh, with the uh, S1 and S2 sequence, okay if you want to increase the alignment score i told you to go for the local alignment instead of global alignment which boost you the score and generally uh, when we can go for this kind of an alignment sequences often contain highly conserved regions if you compare uh, one sequence with other sequences for example if you want to know the insulin protein is uh, resembling to which uh, uh, i mean insulin protein of humans resembling to which insulin protein of other species if you want to do you have to uh, go for pairwise alignment. That is, uh, you compare uh, sequence one, okay, with the sequence two. So this is one such comparison. And uh, the other comparison is uh, S1 compared to S3. So however you make, you can uh, can go for motive search. Okay, there are, we can also go for multiple motive felicitation. If you go for multiple mo motive felicitation and if you use the local kind of an alignment, uh, the regions can be used for initial alignment. So you have to check uh, uh, that uh, you can able to align. So this is possible only through the local alignment. Global alignments is comparing the sequences as such. But if you can align like this, uh, you can also find the similarities of S1, S2, and S3. Isn't it? So almost the motif regions, the functional part or the structural part, whatever shown in red, yellow, blue, are similar in the three sequences. Okay. So that's the importance. And if you see the pairwise alignment, I have explained you with an example. The example I fetched from bioinformatics competing by Bethiron. Okay, so alignment score is generally calculated as the sum of uh, uh, correction factor into number of matches, correction factor into number of gaps. Whatever correction factor I mentioned uh, is uh, the values provided in default, or it will be provided in the problem. If they provide that, you have to use that values for calculation of alignment score. So in this problem, I whatever I taken from the textbook, okay, for the alignment uh, they have given uh, that is for the matches, what we call it as alignments, they are given score as plus uh, one. The so matches, okay, they have uh, given as. Yeah matches they have given as plus one in this case and mismatches they have given a value like minus 0.5 and for the caps okay they have provided like minus 0.5 so these are the values they have uh, used it for calculation here okay if you calculate it you get like uh, nine in this case because you know uh if you see the mismatches you got like four isn't it how we got this four this four we got from here no no, no. this is a uh, so we can find uh, the mismatches this is one mismatch and the other mismatch two three only four no six mismatches three and again, one more mismatch is that somewhere. One, two, three, four are mismatches. Okay, yeah, this is one more mismatch. So whatever I've showed, uh, this these are mismatches now. I can uh, select a different color now, and I can show you the gaps alone. So whatever I selected, now I'm going to show you the gap. So this is what yeah whatever is shown in blue color or the caps so the gaps should be usually in the center in the middle okay it should be in between okay it should not be somewhere here yeah, this can't be considered as gaps so these are considered as mismatches so totally six mismatches and other characters whatever you compare or matches so totally you have 14 matches got it so in this example uh, we can see the alignment score what we calculate is nine and if you see the penalty gap, the penalty gap is uh, calculated using this formula. The uh, default they, they provide this uh, cost of opening like a correction factor. Okay, cost of opening, whatever they provided here is uh, 
minus 0.5. Just like the, these are the data generally they provide okay in, in solving the problem if you're working on a GAT okay graduate aptitude test of engineering or also we have as a, a exam like bioinformatics national certification so for the BINC okay bioinformatics national certification examination this is conducted by IATs or CLRI okay so this is exclusively meant for uh, getting admission in IATs and IACs uh, through a common entrance, this is a common entrance examination. Like how you find GAT, graduate after test of engineering, anyone can ap appear, isn't it? Life sciences and engineering. Similarly, even for the BINC examination, uh, you have only bioinformatics syllabus. You don't have subjects like uh, cell biology, uh, mole molecular biology, plant biotechnology, animal biotechnology, etc. Only you have the bioinformatics in the curriculum. Okay, so one can also attend like this. And if you see, uh, for this, you should uh, know all these uh, formulas. So bioinformatics is not just uh, uh, studying about how to use the tools and databases and how to develop. It's also based on, I mean, bioinformatics and computational biology, collectively I'm mentioning, not only based on that. Uh, it also involves how to develop the algorithms and how to uh, calculate uh, using the formulas okay if and if you know the formulas then you can build the algorithms isn't it so the cost of opening default in this uh, uh, book they have mentioned is minus 0.5 and similarly cost of extension what they provided here is minus 0.5 if they, this data is provided you can able to calculate but only one value this value you have to calculate from the sequence whatever they provide this alone is a variable here these two are fixed at present so we have totally how many gaps here itself you can see four gaps that four gaps alone is mentioned here so if you sum up you get like minus 2.5 so just because we are introducing some four gaps okay uh, we are also calculating an additional formula called penalty gap you know actually this uh, penalty gap and alignment score are, are sum up together to give the corrected alignment score the final alignment score is the sum of alignment score and penalty gap because we, ha we have a penalty just because four gaps are introduced here is it okay isn't it so uh, we find like this okay and edit uh, distance you remember yesterday i explained you like if you have uh, characters of equal length we can go for hamming distance if you find characters of uh, unequal length then we have to go for levenstein distance Okay, so even if you have an additional character like C, D, something like that, still you can use the Levenstein distance. In this case, you have a C here, you don't have any other character, so it considers a mismatch. Mismatch and gaps are collectively, uh, we call it as a genetic distance. And in this case, we have an, uh, uh, not uh, equal characters in length, so we are using a Levenstein distance. So in this case, we have Levenstein distance, whatever you calculate, is four. Okay, because one mismatch, one gap, one mismatch, and one mismatch, so totally four. So if you introduce a character C here, you get Levenstein distance as four. But you can't able to use this for having distance calculation. Okay, this is what we have seen on yesterday, and we have seen the software for alignment. Okay, for pairwise alignment, we have a uh, formula. I mean, we have so many tools. Okay, can see needle. Okay, the needle uh, generally used for, uh, it, it takes you even to the emboss. There is a package called emboss. It takes you to the emboss package. And in emboss, we use this uh, needle program for working on global alignment. This is used for generally global alignment. And if you find water, the water is used for working on local alignment. So if uh, whatever you are going to work on these algorithms, Needleman once algorithm, needle program, Waterman, Smith Waterman algorithm uses the water program present in package called MBOS, European Molecular Biology Open Software Suit. Okay, so this is the program. I mean, this is the package where we can find 151 programs to work on uh, sequence alignment uh, sequence similarity and other kind of phylogeny. We have so many kind of tools in that. Okay. 
so uh, whatever i showed you okay all these uh, tools or uh, we can get hyperlinks from this url eva.ac.uk j dispatcher this is the url you can get all these tools information pairwise sequence alignment uh, tools you can also get from malware tools remember yesterday i explained you all this and uh, dot matrix word uh, explained uh, even in dot matrix method wherever you find asterisk uh, you uh, i mean wherever you find matches you drop the asterisk and uh, if you see in the diagonal you have a more number of matches in dot matrix method what are capable method we have seen the best example is the fasta which uses the hashing that code dynamic programming is what we are going to discuss it today about the needleman one algorithm. First, we'll discuss about the needleman. Before going to the needleman, uh, can I go for a few more slides on multiple sequence alignment? Uh, in multiple sequence alignment, again, uh, same URL you can find. Okay, so progressive strategy uses cluster w cluster x msc proline these programs uses deep poly progressive strategy iterative strategy genetic algorithms and heat and morpho models so cluster w remember i i have uh, given some demo on cluster w cluster omega surface so at that time i i told you to go for uh, eba okay eba website and also i asked you to go for genome.jp genome.jp J P Japan eba.ac.uk you used it uh, 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 use the cluster W okay good okay so the window looks like this okay and the output uh, appears like this and if you see cluster X this is a next program they uh, you know the cluster X I told you this is not an online software but this is a uh, yeah, this is the open source software. You have to download and install. So if you download and install, you get a window like this. So it looks like a Java. This program is written in Java. And obviously, uh, if you have a sequence in your desktop, simply without internet, you can load the sequences here. OK, you can load the sequence. OK, and then uh, you have to find the sequence and you have to just uh, uh give the give this as an input whatever you have selected you can find in the selection and uh, if you go for multiple alignment okay you get like this okay so uh, yeah, 10 different species are compared now you can go for do, uh, doing complete uh, alignment or if you want to get a tree okay so you can use these uh, options so this is an uh, open source software and if you see the comparison of msa techniques okay in techniques cluster omega okay uh, which uses input formats like fasta emb chain bank output format is again cluster w person fasta msf okay maximum you can use 4000 sequences this is the limit and uh, maximum file size is around 4 mb not more than that and sequences you can use protein dna rna and uh, default it uses the progressive method okay so it uses the progressive method and if you want to generally go for cluster we have multiple uh, hyperlinks, I mean, uh, in the multiple uh, databases, you have this as one of the two, like how you find uh, BLAST, even a cluster is found in most of the public domain databases. Uh, I told you, I given a demo in eba.ac.uk with the cluster Omega, okay? So this is the URL, the second URL for cluster. And uh, if you see this uh, second program is Muzzle, M-U-S-C-L-E, uh, actually, Muzzle. OK, so the Muzzle uses FASTA, EMP, GenBank. Um, An output format is FASTA, Cluster, WMSF, up to 500 sequence. So it's having a uh, limit. Is, the limit is very less when, uh, compared to Omega. And maximum file size, only the proteins are generally used. And it uses the progressive method. Like uh, muscle, you can go for MAFT. This is the third one. And uh, K align, okay, red align, and uh, prop on. So these are some of the multiple sequence alignment. And uh, you can see the comparison. MSA tools, okay. So if you want to work on progressive alignment, uh, there's an uh, 
uh, cluster W. You can go for the coffee. Okay, you can go for the the land popcorns, MAFT. You have uh, versions also. You can uh, download the software accordingly, and I mean you can use it in online. So most of the softwares you are going to use it in online. And uh, multi line cluster W K line muscle. Okay. Now let me take you to the overall tools. So whatever we have seen, plus W, uh, W2, Omega, KLN, MFT, Muscle, MVU, T Coffee, WebTrack, MEME, Mecca. These are the MSA tools we have discussed. And if you see the applications of MSA, this is used in extrapolation. Pilo uh, extrapolation, I mean, uh, if you want to uh if you want to get a good multiple sequence alignment with uncharacterized sequence for example if you have 10 sequences in comparison and uh, the first sequence is your desired sequence can be a human sequence human protein sequence and you want to know which is close related to human protein sequence out of the other nine sequences you can better go for multiple sequence alignment where you can able to get a kind of a neat uh, uh, kind of uh, aligning Okay, and if you see the progressive alignment, let me explain more about the progressive alignment. In progressive alignment, uh, I don't have a space. I can explain you here where uh, cluster W uses the progressive alignment. If you see the progressive alignment, okay, if you have sequences like A, B, C, D, okay, you, are, you know how many alignments can be done in progressive? Progressive, you have only pair, uh, two sequences are compared at a time. If so, if you have four sequences, okay, so in this case, you can able to find combination of A can be compared with B. This is first uh, alignment. And second alignment is A can be compared with C. And the third one is A can be compared with D. And the fourth alignment is B compared with C. And fifth alignment is B compared with D. And the sixth alignment, what we see here is uh, C compared with D. So totally, if you have four sequences, okay, uh, A, B, C, D, you have six combinations, six combinations of alignment, okay. So if only if you compare this uh, four characters in six alignments, I mean four sequences in six alignments, then only you can come to know which is closer to something. For example, if A is your human okay and bcd or from other species can be rat mice and uh, dog and if you can find if a and b matching is more you figure if the score is more then obviously uh the human is more closely resembling with the rat protein when compared to the mice and uh, the dog okay likewise we have to uh, check this uh, through a combination of pairwise elements so again it's a combination of pairwise elements whatever we studied earlier okay uh, pairwise alignment is one type and multiple sequence alignment and uh, uh, however we can find this a uh, multiple sequence alignment but you can find in the combination of pairwise elements in progressive alignments okay uh, likewise if you see this uh, uh, application okay so extrapolation is one of the application uh, related to whatever I explained you in progressive uh, phylogenetic analysis okay so you can uh, construct a phylogenetic tree you can relate one species with other species through the tree kind of a uh, uh, tree kind of a display and pattern can be identified if you don't know about your unknown sequence if you want to find it you can uh, check the alignment uh, from the already existing database then you can come to know which is closely resembling through the matches mismatches and gaps if you go for sequence alignment obviously you find these three technical terms matches mismatches and gaps only through that one day we can able to calculate the alignment score and we can make it okay and uh, we can find it can also use for checking the dna regulatory elements structure prediction pcr analysis and uh, single nucleotide polymorphism other methods of msa includes uh, sum of paths method star alignment two-step method of course two-step method is what we are using in progressive isn't it cluster and pile of approaches uses this uh, two-step method automated tools generally the star uh, star alignment is used uh, in iterative uh, kind of a methods okay this is something related to multiple sequence alignment
Now let me take you to the illustration of uh, pairwise sequence alignment, especially on dynamic programming through Needleman once algorithm. Okay, so dynamic programming is a common concept, and uh, we have so many kind of uh, dynamic programming. So one such example is uh, Needleman once, and second is Smith Waterman. Likewise, we have four Russian algorithm bounded uh, Needleman uh, algorithm, Needleman once algorithm bounded uh, Smith Waterman algorithm. Bounded again, uh, uh, gap programming. So many kind of uh, uh, types are there in dynamic programming. At least we can see the illustration of two algorithms. One is Neriman once for global alignment and Smith Waterman for local alignment. So if you see this algorithm, okay, majorly we have three major steps in algorithm. One is initialization, second is the iteration, and the third is the termination. Okay, do you understand anything from this? Okay, do you understand anything? No, okay. sir. Nothing. No, nothing. Huh? So, if one day if we solve a problem, then we can understand. Okay, first uh, we can solve a problem, then I can try to illustrate, uh, uh, I can come to this slide and I can explain it. Okay, so now we can go to a problem. So, uh, in this Neilman once algorithm, okay, we are going to take uh, uh, two sequences. One is query. Okay, I take a pen. So, one is actually query. Query sequence, you find ATCG and database sequence TCG. Okay, so these are the two sequences. So, uh, for uh, uh, query sequence okay i'm going to uh, uh, go from bottom to up okay i'm going to fill the sequence from bottom to up and database sequence i fill from uh, uh, in the bottom okay so that is uh, however we are going to use an approach called bottom up approach i'm going to use i'm going to use bottom up approach uh, for the nilman one solve algorithm okay so first I fill the database sequence at the bottom. Okay, for filling the database sequence, okay, I'm going to use initially a gap. Okay, and after gap, I have to fill the sequence T, C, G. So this is the sequence I filled for database. Now for the query, again, I have to first introduce a gap. So according to algorithm, we should introduce a gap then we have to fill the sequence. So it's a bottom up approach, isn't it? So we fill from bottom A, T, C, G. So these are the uh, characters we filled in uh, rows and columns. If it is a dot matrix method, so wherever you find uh, matches, you just give a dot, isn't it? But in this case, it's not like that, okay? So we have to fill the values. Each and every cell, okay has to be filled with values so according to this neilman once algorithm okay uh, so what you have to understand is we have to understand the rules there are totally three rules given in uh, neilman once algorithm okay the first rule is if it is a box beside you plus cap value if box beside i mean so, for example, if you take this T, so we can't able to first uh, fill the value for T because we have to start from here and we have to fill the values in row wise. And if you fill these values, you have the values here. Okay. Uh, kindly mute if you have a doubt. We can accommodate it. Let me explain first. Then uh, uh, I'll finally ask you whether you have doubts or not. If you have doubts, you can ask. Okay. Because uh, I have to complete. If I'm not completing, you won't understand anything. In between okay so first we have to fill the gaps uh, and we have to fill the database sequence characters and uh, query sequence characters are filled at the top okay and uh, each and every cell so whatever uh, uh, thing uh, so you can find here okay each and everything we call it is a cell and each cell okay has to be filled initially you have to fill this cell initially you have to fill this cell and the next cell to be filled is like this. So likewise, you will be filling like this. Okay. So the, you have to fill according to the sequence. Okay. Now let me take the eraser. Yes.
I'll take it. I use a different color now. Okay, so I have to fill like this. So for this first box beside. So if you see for this cell, box beside is this, and uh, box bo I mean box beside is this, box bottom is a uh, down. Box diagonal is the down diagonal. Now let me fill this. So also before going to this, uh, using these three rules, box bottom is positive cap and box beside is positive cap and diagonal, you have to fill the match and mismatch value. Okay, if you find any matches, you have to give score like one. And if you find mismatch, you have to give score like minus one. And for the cap, you have to give like minus two. So the first step what we do in Needleman once algorithm is we have to go for initialization. The first step what we use is initialization. Initialization, the first cell what you're going to fill is zero. Okay. And the next what you're going to fill is adding the cap. Adding the cap, uh, this is also a sub-step in initialization. So the gap value is minus two. If you want to fill the next uh, cell value, you have to add the cap once again. So if you add the cap, minus 2 plus minus 2 is minus 4. And again, you have to add one more cap. So minus 4 plus minus 2 is minus 6. Likewise, even in the uh, row, uh, in the first row, you have to fill like this. You have to fill the cap value. Minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8. This is what Needleman wants algorithm. The, uh, this is the first step, initialization step. That is the zeroth comma zero. Okay, you got it. Uh, so this is actually zero comma zero cell. Zero comma zero is this. Okay, so this you have to initialize with zero, and then you have to start filling up the uh, cap values. Now, uh, can I erase this? If you have this, you you can. You will be now i take the pin okay so now the next thing is that i have to fill the values uh, from each cell so if you want to fill this okay you can only complete from here you have to start only from here and then you have to proceed accordingly okay because only in this cell you have three values you can have you can able to fill box beside you can also able to fill box bottom and you can also fill from box tag only here you can able to fill three values but here only box beside is there box uh, i mean box bottom is there box diagonal is there box beside is not there unless you complete this uh, filling this value you can't able to go to this cell so first i can complete this cell okay so for each and every box hereafter uh, we will be finding three values so from here onwards, we call this as iterative step. The first step is initialization, okay? And the second step is iterative step. In iterative step, each and every cell is filled with three values, okay? So we have to use uh, these rules, these three rules. First, we are going to use box beside. So if you find box beside, obviously, you have to give that value. You have to fill that value, minus 2. So in box beside you have minus two. Actually, uh, you have to fill with cap. You have to sum up with cap value. You already have minus two, okay? And you already have the cap value like minus two. So you can't give like minus two. Instead, you have to give like minus two plus minus two, okay? So you have to give like minus two plus minus two. So it's not minus two but minus four. Already have minus two. Sum up with cap value, you get minus 4. And box bottom, what they're mentioning, add the cap value. So if you find minus 2 and the cap value once again is minus 2, minus 2 plus minus 2 is minus 4. This is how we got minus 4. You already have minus 2. We fill uh, sum up with the cap value. So minus 4, minus 4 is filled now. Okay. And the, the third value to be filled is from the diagonal. So in the for filling the diagonal value, 
you have to check whether the characters are showing matches or mismatches. Here you have A. Here you have T. A and T is a mismatch. If it is a mismatch, you have to give this value, minus 1. You have to sum up with minus 1. So 0 and the mismatch value, what they have given is minus 1. So 0 plus minus 1 is minus 1. 0 plus minus 1 is minus 1. OK. And uh, so this, uh, so you have filled this value, three values. But you can't able to use all these three values to fill this uh, box beside value. If you want to try with this, OK, use this cell value to fill here, box beside. At least box bottom, you have only one value. And even box diagonal is only one value. But this is most confusing, isn't it? But uh, uh, how to select this box beside value then? If you want to fill this cell, you have to decide by checking which is the maximum of all the three values. OK, so maximum of all three values is minus one. So this alone will be keeping it and this will you will be discarding it. OK, you won't uh, take care at all. It means that uh, so having these values is not worthy. So I can also delete it. OK. If, uh, if we are not using it. Now, let me go for calculation. So this is the final value I have optimized in this cell. So whatever optimized I will be using for calculation, start from box beside once again, minus 1, and your, what you have to add, plus gap value. The gap value what you have is minus 2. Minus 1 plus minus 2 is nothing but minus 3. And similarly, if you see the box bottom, what you have to add plus gap so minus 4 plus minus 2 so what you'll be getting minus 6 diagonal minus 2 check a and c are match or mismatch it's a mismatch so minus 2 plus mismatch value is minus 1 minus 2 plus minus 1 is minus 3 so what is the next step to check which is the maximum of all the three values that so you have to take for optimization. So minus 3 and minus 3. So take 1 minus 3. So most probably the diagonal shows the maximum value. So I'm going to choose this. So if I choose this, obviously these two are eliminated. So now you can go for calculation in box beside minus 5, minus 8. And see the diagonal. So what you'll be getting? A and G are mismatched. So minus 5. So this is optimized now. Minus 5 is optimized okay now uh, you can go here minus six so fill like this so use the same formula so you have to use only minus one as the uh, optimized value only for calculation from box bottom minus two but see here some peculiar thing t and t are matches if t and t are mass matches don't sum up with my mismatch value but sum up with match value the match value what they provided is plus one so minus two plus 1 is nothing but minus 1. Minus 2 plus match value is plus 1. So you got like minus 1. So optimize this value. OK, use only this value for calculation. So how you get now? Minus 3, minus 1 plus minus 2. And uh, minus 3 plus minus 2 is minus 5. OK, and from the diagonal, you have minus 1. But T and C are a mismatch. So minus 1 plus the mismatch value minus 1 is nothing but minus 2. Again, you get the diagonal as the maximum value. You optimize it for calculation of the next subsequent cell. So minus 2 plus the gap value is minus 4. And minus 5 plus the gap value is minus 7. And minus 3 plus uh, the mismatch value because T and G are mismatches. So obviously get like minus 4. Minus 3 plus minus 1 is nothing but minus 4. This is optimized again. You got the diagonal one as the optimized value, isn't it? OK, now let me calculate from here. Minus 6 plus minus 2 is minus 8. Minus 1 plus minus 2 is minus 3. And minus 4 uh, plus the mismatch value is minus 5, OK? Because C and T are mismatches. In this case, which is the optimized value, not the diagonal, but the box bottom. But whatever maximum value, that alone you have to take for the next uh, cell calculation. So minus 
3 plus minus cap value. It is minus 5. Okay, minus 3 plus minus 2 is minus 5. Minus 2 plus minus 2 is minus 4. And minus 1, okay, plus the ma match value C and C or matches. So you get like 0. Okay, and uh, this 0 you are going to take as an optimized value. This you can use it for the box beside calculation. So 0 plus minus 2, that is the gap value. And minus 4 plus minus 2 is minus 6. And minus 2 plus the mismatch value because C and D are mismatched. So minus 3. So, but what is the maximum here? Minus 2. And now here minus 10, minus 5, minus 6, and minus 7. So minus 5 is the optimized value, minus 7, minus 2, 0 plus, minus 2 is minus 2, and uh, diagonal is minus 3 here, and G and C are mismatch, minus 4. So minus 2 is the optimized value, and this you can use it, minus 4, minus 4, okay. And from the diagonal 0, G and G are matches, so you get like 1. You get like 1. Okay, this is the last cell value. So from here, from this cell to the calculation of this cell, whatever you have used these steps, this we call it as iterative step. Initialization step is what this, what I written in blue color. And whatever written in black color is the iterative. And the third final thing is, final step in Needleman 1's algorithm is, Termination. The termination, okay, ca can be done, okay, uh, by checking the last cell value. By checking the last cell value. So, what is the last cell optimized value? So, this is the last cell optimized value that is plus one. So, the first objective is to give the alignment score. In our case, the last cell uh, maximum value, the optimized value is plus 1. For these two sequences in comparison, using the Needleman 1's algorithm, which, uh, no, this is actually global alignment, not the local. This uses this uses the global alignment okay so through the global alignment you have calculated the alignment score as plus one so uh, this is one step in using the needleman one uh, one small algorithm and the next step is to go for back tracing the next step is to go for back tracing so the back tracing can be done from the alignment score uh, from the alignment score if you see plus one, how you got plus one, whether you got from box beside or you got from box bottom or you got from this, the, the plus one is rated only from box diagonal, only from the box diagonal. So I am going to give you an arrow mark like this. And how you got this zero, box beside value minus three or minus two or minus one, you got only from this, that is box diagonal okay and how we got this minus one value you got from uh, box beside or this okay so you got uh, this minus one only from the box diagonal so this is what we call it as a back tracing okay if you back trace it okay you can able to find uh like this okay obviously the next thing is that the needleman once is not just used for calculating alignment score this is used for aligning the two sequences if you have a sequence one as a query sequence and sequence two as a database sequence, you have to align. Okay, how to align these sequences? So initially, what we have here is we just start from the last thing, G. G. Okay, you keep G for the first sequence and second sequence G in the second. And now, uh, if you see the here, okay, we have C. So keep C. Because uh, how I am getting, say, uh, oh, if I use C, okay, you are also having C. 
here so you have just because this c and c is uh, you can find here i'm giving like this now you can see here the t and d okay so i'm going to give like this okay um, based on the back tracing okay and you have a an additional character in query sequence that you keep it like that so initially we had sequences like atcg for query and database sequence like tcg but after the alignment the alignment is done like this again i'm telling you how the alignment is done see the uh, last character in the uh, query sequence that is g and g and the for the database sequence we have g okay so for the g and g you got the score like one this is the final value isn't it so just because of that you have given g and g next to c and c you have to you are filling from this value this value you can find uh, the query sequence as c so i given like c and even the database sequence as c so now i'm giving like c so likewise i have gone so actually here you have a cap instead of giving a cap because at the beginning you can't give a cap isn't it so you leave it as such so this is the proper aligned sequence this is the proper aligned so the one first thing is to calculate the alignment score second thing is uh, the second objective of using neeliman one algorithm is used the uh, is to do the alignment of sequences this can be done like this and if you see this initialization step okay so now we can see the algorithm now we can able to understand the first cell what i use for 0 comma 0 i initialized as 0 remember this is 0 comma 0 i initialized as 0 now come to this step 0 comma j is equals j here i mean the column first column okay the first column is given as minus j into t so that is here what you do it's not actually into this is actually plus uh, the d refers to the gap value the gap value what i did i sum up the with minus 2 okay whatever score here is given these values are generally given in the problem question uh, th this is the data provided and also the query and database are also the problem the data provided in the problem they ask you to simply go for calculation of alignment score and they ask you to calculate uh, go for the alignment of sequences go for pairwise sequence alignment if so you have to uh, put these sequences query and database sequences in the form of matrix table start filling the values using these three methods i mean three steps in algorithm initialization iteration and termination in initialization initially uh, for the first cell 0 comma 0 is 0 and the uh, uh, zero row first column is uh, actually you have to sum up with the cap value and even the rows have to be filled with cap value okay i have to sum up with cap value like so using the initialization you fill this uh, minus 2 to minus 8 and minus 2 to minus 6 here now let me go to the iteration in iteration okay so this is i minus 1 comma j actually which is then i comma j uh if you see this uh thing okay iteration has started from here this is the first cell we have used the iteration this cell this cell is used okay this cell is used for iteration isn't it so if you see this cell okay this is what we uh keep it as i comma j this is i comma j if this is i comma j what is this cell and what is this cell this is i minus one comma j minus one okay so because and if you see this cell this is actually uh, uh row is increased so i comma j minus one and this is i minus one comma j okay if this is i comma j and these are the corresponding uh, elements in rows and columns so if you see here i one i minus one comma j what is i minus one comma j this is one okay box this is actually box bottom it refers to the box bottom okay i comma j minus one so this is box beside so box beside you sum up with the cap value okay and also box bottom 
you sum up with the cap value. You find this T refers to the cap. And if you find uh, this uh, diagonal element, I minus 1 comma J minus 1. Okay, you have to give either match value or you, are, or you have to sum up with mismatch value. So for this, for the diagonal, you are using this. Okay, so if I am using bottom of approach, it will be like this. We can also fill the values from up, up, up down approach. What I did, I just uh, started giving the sequences from here, T, C, G in bottom. Instead of uh, giving in the bottom, if I give like T, C, G at the top uh, with a cap value, and if I give a cap and if I give A, T, C, G, then this is up down approach. Either you can solve, uh, fill from bottom to uh, up, or you can fill from top to bottom. Then ultimately in the bottom, the last cell, what you get is the element score. In the inman one cell group. Got it? So this is what we have done here. Okay. And uh, the termination, the last cell value, whatever uh, you optimized, uh, last, this is what we call it as M comma N. F M comma N. This is the optimal score. So the first objective, again, I'm telling you, they ask you, they give you this data match, mismatch, gap value data, query database sequence data. They ask you to calculate alignment score. And to get a proper alignment, correct alignment, you have you have to give these two different outputs. Okay. Anyone have doubts in this? Yes or no? No, thank you so much, sir. Good. Okay. Can I go with the Smith Waterman and try to complete within four minutes? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now I, I think uh, so even the, uh, uh, some more problems, okay, twisting problems you can also find in Wikipedia. This is the picture I have taken from the Wikipedia. You can uh, use this uh, uh, Wikipedia problem for further uh, uh, for, for practicing with few more examples. Okay, now we can see the Smith Waterman. So for uh, this is the Smith Waterman algorithm. Again, you find the same three steps, but you know, initialization step is different. And termination step is different from Neelman ones. One is the iteration step alone is common. Then what how to go for initialization, how to go for termination? That we'll be seeing it now. So for this, I have taken instead of ATCG, I mean uh, the query I have taken as ATCG for database, instead of TCG, I'm using TCC. Just this character alone I have changed. Uh, again, if you use the same uh, kind of a correction factor values like match, mismatch, and cap, okay. And uh, of course, for the iteration, I told you the second step, you use the same rules and same step. So uh, I'll be using it. So now, how to solve this problem? Again, if I'm going for the bottom uh, up approach, at least one you can be familiar, okay. If you are uh, uh, practicing the bottom up approach, try to get familiar with it, okay. Now I start with it. First, you have to give, fill the cap. P, C, C. Now, the first step, you have to fill the gap. A, T, C, G. Okay. Now, we have to fill the values, isn't it? So, I am going to fill the values one by one. So, I am going to use uh, the first initialization step. What we do in Smith Waterman algorithm is instead of filling First value is zero, no doubt in that. Zero comma zero cell is zero. But the other cells we have to fill like zero. We should not sum up with cap, but we have to give all the first one, first column as zero. Okay, this is what initialization step. This is the step varies from Neilman one algorithm. Then what is the next step? It is an iteration step. Iteration step is similar to Neilman ones. So zero plus cap value. What is the cap value? Minus 2 here. And in this case, it's minus 2. And A and T are mismatched, so minus 1. The maximum value, what you find is the minus 1. So obviously, here you get like minus 3, minus 2. And uh, A and C are mismatched, it's a minus 1. So minus 1 is the uh, optimized value. Here, minus 2, 0. If, uh, and uh, this uh, is a mismatch, so you have minus 1. Now, come here, minus 2 minus 3, and it's a match. So 0 plus 1 is 1. So 1 is your maximum value. So using this uh, 
iteration step okay you can you have to calculate the three values for this now t and c is a mismatch you got like minus two but the optimized value here is minus one so minus three minus three minus one plus the mismatch is minus two so this is your optimized value and here uh if i'm wrong you just uh, uh interrupt me okay uh so minus uh, two and here you have minus one and zero plus is a mismatch is a minus one can't take anything okay and now i'm taking this uh giving a minus three and uh, minus three and you see one and uh, c and c is a match c and c is a match so one plus one is two what maximum value two and uh, if you see here uh, you get like zero and here you get like minus four and you have minus one so minus one and uh, c and c once again is a match so now here it's a zero okay so this is the optimized value now minus two and uh, here minus three and zero g and t is a mismatch and uh, optimized value is minus one and uh, minus three and here you get like zero and minus one c and c is a, a g and c is a mismatch so minus two so this is the optimized value minus two and here you have a zero like minus two and g and c is a mismatch so you have one okay so this is the optimized value so we have completed the iteration step the termination step is different i told you it's not the same it's different then how uh how it varied okay that will be saying it now so for this uh we have to see uh the alignment score can be uh find out not in the final cell but in the cells where you find the maximum value when compared to one zero zero you find two is the maximum value this is the maximum value found in all the cells what you done in iteration step so your correct answer of the alignment score is plus two okay so unlike nilman one cell got them only in the last cell alone whatever maximum you find you give it whatever optimized you have you will be giving as alignment score but here it's not like that you can align get alignment score in any of the cells you got this as the score and you have to go for the back tracing now so back tracing i'm going to go for so back tracing how we got this two we have to start with the two okay this two you got one day from here and how how we got this one the one you got from the diagonal okay so this is the back tracing okay so we have to start with c and c so c and c and the next one is the t and t so t and t okay uh and what is this a you give like a so what are the characters left out g and what is the character left out c so this is the correct alignment the aligned sequence is this okay so you have to show this score and you have to show this so whatever i mentioned if you see the algorithm you can understand now so what i did the first uh, uh, row and first column I initialized as zero, isn't it? The first, this is according to the rows and this is according to the column. So everything you have initialized as zero and use the same iterative step. And uh, uh, F optimum is not the M comma N, but this is uh, I comma J F of I J. It means that you can find optimum alignment in any of the cells. In this case, we got here. Okay, this is the illustration of Smith Waterman algorithm. So if you understand, uh, if you understand uh, the uh, Neelman ones, it's easier to understand even Smith Waterman algorithm. Do you have any doubts? So watch the video, okay, multiple times so that you can able to understand. Okay, and on tomorrow session, we'll be discussing on uh the blast uh blast algorithm and pam and browser okay if no doubts uh, thank you for your patience and interaction have a great day to everyone thank you sir